This is Jeremy Tesmer with SGTV. On May 5th, Sullivan Goss will open our second exhibition from the estate of Gene Swigget, a peculiar and precocious draftsman whose practice focused, you might say, on the particulars. Gene Swigget matured as an artist during the late 1920s and early 1930s, studying at Chenard in San Diego State, where he double majored in art and mathematics. He went on to earn an MFA from USC with additional studies at the Claremont Graduate School. In the 30s, public murals were at the forefront of artistic concerns with giants like Thomas Hart Benton in the Midwest and Los Tres Grandes, Rivera, Siqueiros, and Orozco doing projects out here in California. Swigget worked through the entire Great Depression on public and private murals, about 40 in all. When the war came, he was lucky enough to serve stateside in an Air Force radar room. The war's end found him honorably discharged, married, and a new father. He was an artist, sure, but he took his responsibilities to heart, so he got himself a job at San Diego State. Swigget's works of the 40s and 50s were responsive to his training as a muralist, his strong technical skills, and maybe his classes with Henry Lee McPhee at Claremont in the early 50s. Throughout much of this time, Swigget nevertheless continued to create a body of uncannily realistic work, driven by his own remarkable drawing skills. By the 1960s, Swigget was a tenured professor, and his work took a decided turn. It seemed to start innocently enough, but the revolutionary tenor of the era swept Swigget up as the 60s became the 70s. It was, as we are told, the dawning of the Age of Aquarius. Vietnam, the war on drugs, the civil rights struggle for women, for African Americans, for the LGBTQ community, and then the first Intel microprocessor, the first email, they all coincided with the creation of Bicycle, a painting which could be of one of today's college kids, the beard, the aviator glasses, the bicycle, but anyway. The art world was also in revolt, with interest in what was variously called the New Realism, photorealism and superrealism catching on all over the world. Artists like Robert Cottingham, Robert Bechtel, Philip Perlstein, Richard Estes, Ralph Goings, Dwayne Hansen, and Chuck Close all began their rise to international stardom. That we know of, Swigget exhibited with Cottingham, Bechtel, and Perlstein. But with 700 exhibitions in his lifetime, mapping Swigget's associations is going to take us a bit more time. The important thing to note is that Swigget had been at it for 40 years by then. He was a full generation older than these artists. Strange as it seems, the eccentric artist from San Diego had been ahead of the game. Of course, Swigget's work wasn't as banal as that of Bechtel or Estes or Goings. He didn't mimic photographic effects like Close. His work had a comic edge. He was someone who loved art and loved history and took genuine delight in the human form. I also suspect that he was very much in agreement with Gloria Steinem when she said, we are talking about a society in which there will be no roles other than those chosen or those earned. We are really talking about humanism. Strange as it seems, Swigget's particular brand of humanism often made him out to be an odd figure through much of the mid-20th century. But at the century's close, that impression changed. Gene Swigget, Strange as It Seems, will be on view through July 3rd. Come see it.